Next, we need to configure the timer. Inside the timer block, there is a prescaler register and there is counter block register which will count up continuously. And there is a auto reload register also. For our microcontroller and most of the STM32 devices, counter and prescaler register are of 16 bit size. Auto reload registers normally come up with 16 bit size, but for our device it is 20 bit size. Doesn't matter. Now we will see how a timer functions. The counter blocks start to increment from 0 and when it reaches the value stored in auto reload register, counter register value is rolled back to 0 and the timer peripheral will assert a timer interrupt and the programmer can use this feature to implement any time related activities. In our case, we have to turn on the LED every 0.5 second right so we can do some calculation. One thing to note here, prescaler can hold a zero value also, means CNT clock or count clock is calculated using this expression. In our case, we can fix our prescaler to zero, so count clock is 85 MHz. The counter is counting up with this frequency, so what is its time period then? It's reciprocal, right? So 1 by 85 MHz equal to 0.0. 1176 microsecond but we need to stop the timer at 0.5 second using the value stored in auto reload register so what should be that value in order to find out that we can divide 0.5 with our timer period oh we are getting very big value it is 42517 into 10 to the power 3 since counter can count only up to 16 bit value Auto reload register can also store a maximum 16 bit value. So it is 65535 because it is the maximum 16 bit value. So in this case, we have to reduce the value which we got by increasing prescaler or decreasing count clock. Prescaler we can try with 700. So if we follow same procedure, we will get auto reload register value as 60628. So it is a valid value because it is less than 65535. Yes, now we have got what we wanted. So please take a deep breath, end of all calculations. So now go back to IDE, go to pinout and configuration. In the timer 6 peripheral, select parameter settings. Here you can see prescaler field. So we can fill 700 there. The counter field, it should count up. Then counter period, this is where we have to store the auto reload register value. Auto reload preload, we have to change that to enable. Then go to NVIC settings. When timer rolls back, there is an interrupt generated. To address that, we have to enable the timer 6 global interrupt. That's all. We have successfully configured our timer unit. Next, we can just verify our clock sources once. Actually, we should do this first for all the projects. Go to System Core and select RCC or uh, Reset and Clock Control. So here uh, we can see our two external clock sources. So it is a crucial oscillator by default. Okay, we don't need to change that. Perfect. Now go to Project Manager. You can keep the same settings. You can click the Save button to generate the code now. Click Yes. So now we have our code generated by the cube software. This is the main file. Quickly we can go to our main function. So we are generating our 0.5 second time base using the timer interrupts. So whenever counter register reaches auto reload register value, it rolls back and generates the timer interrupt. We have seen in our calculation that an interrupt will be generated every 0.5 second. So we can say that interrupt is generated when the period got elapsed. To handle this interrupt, HL library is providing us one callback function, HL team period elapsed. So we can write that function here. It has a timer handle as the argument, or we can say it is the timer object for which we have configured all the parameters. So when timer elapses 0.5 second, program comes into this function. Now what should we do here? We have to turn on or turn off the LED, right? 
simply we can use agile toggle function so we have used this function in the blinking led video you can visit that in top if you have any doubt in the function implementation okay we can continue as required i am putting port a and pin 5 where the led is connected so we have finished implementing timer interrupt handler but on program startup we have to start the timer by enabling its interrupt for that we can use this ready-made HL function HL time base start it we have to provide our timer object as argument if you have confusion about timer object you can see that declared here in ST's language we are calling them handles okay we will learn more about them in future now we can build our program oh we have got an error sorry actually this zero should not be here perfect so i'm building it again yeah no errors now we can uh, debug you can keep the default settings okay i'm clicking on the play button yeah now program is running and you can see that the led is blinking every 0.5 second perfect Now can we try adding our old instructions in the while loop and we'll check if it affects blinking duration of the LED. So I am copying the same instructions from the LED blinking program and I am pasting that here. Yeah, again we can try building the program. Yeah, I am debugging. Yeah, we can run the program. You can see that LED is blinking with the same speed. Right. Perfect. So it should not change because we are dealing with timer and interrupts. It is working independently with the instructions used in main function. Okay, hope you have understood. Actually, I know this video is super lengthy, but I couldn't avoid speaking many topics. If you have any doubts, please let me know in the comment section. I can try best to answer them if you find this video useful you can recommend that to your uh, colleagues and friends and wishing you all the happiness and we'll meet you in another video soon okay bye